What's going on everyone, Mario here with AutoDS and in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you everything that you need to know in order to start dropshipping from Alibaba. Currently, Alibaba is one of the biggest suppliers for dropshipping products and has an immense amount of suppliers. On top of that, they also have an unlimited amount of niches. So trust me, you want to start using Alibaba as one of your suppliers. Now, before we get started, as always, please make sure if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. Here on this channel, we cover anything and everything dropshipping related, ranging from the top products to dropship all the way up until the best tips and tricks to help you start and scale your business. Just check out all of these different comments from some of our viewers. Now, to go along with this video, we do have an article that has everything that I'm going to be talking about and a little bit extra. If you want to check that out, just go ahead and check out the description down below. The link to the article will be there. So so what exactly is Alibaba? Well, just like AliExpress, CJ Dropshipping, or DHK, Alibaba is a website that has tons of different suppliers selling a bunch of different products. And most of the times people use this website to purchase either wholesale items or to dropship items. Now, Alibaba has over 150,000 different suppliers. And honestly, there's a lot more than that. But all of these different suppliers have tons of different products. Some of them have similar products. Some of them have different products. And a lot of them are ranging in different niches. So rest assured that if you start dropshipping, dropshipping from Alibaba, you're going to find pretty much anything that you need in any niche. Now, when it comes to dropshipping on Alibaba, there are quite a few different benefits. For one, as I mentioned earlier, you have a pretty immense product catalog. On top of that, you also have wholesale pricing and you have branding options. So some of the different sellers on there can help you put your brand or your logo on either your packaging or sometimes the items themselves. As far as shipping, Alibaba pretty much caters to the entire world. So you're going to find worldwide shipping on there for practically any product. Also, some of the different sellers on there always have some sort of deal or discount going on where you can save a couple of extra bucks. And remember, as I always say, a dollar saved is a dollar earned. Another great thing about Alibaba is their buyer protection. So if you have any issues with a supplier or with a product that maybe got lost in transit or is delayed by maybe like four or five months, then you can go ahead and reach out to Alibaba themselves and they'll take care of you. They'll help you out. All you have to do is explain the situation, provide some information and you're all set. Now let's take a quick look at one of the Alibaba product pages. So I currently just looked up a blender bottle and here you can see quite a bit of information. So you have different prices for different amounts of pieces. For the most part, this is how you're going to find a lot of the product pages on here. And this actually leads me to one of the cons of using Alibaba. A lot of sellers are going to have some sort of minimum order quantity, but don't fret because there is a way around that. So stay tuned just a bit and I'll go ahead and show you what you can do to avoid that. So as you see over here, you have 10 to 99 pieces. Those are going to be $5. Then if you purchase 100 to 499, it's going to go down 50 cents to $4.50 and so on. As you can see, there's also a few different variations and a bit more information on shipping as well as information on the product itself. Now, just looking at this right here, it gives you kind of a similar feel of AliExpress, doesn't it? Now, in order to place an order with one of our sellers and have just one item shipped directly to our customer, we're not going to be able to go the generic product page route. So this is what we can do. So your first option is if you have a proven track record, if you are a drop shipper and you've had quite a few different sales, you can actually try negotiating with the sellers themselves. And doing so is super easy. All you have to do is over here, go ahead and click on contact supplier. Once you click that, you're going to have to sign in and then you're going to get this little box right here. So it's going to ask you for some information. In this case, it's going to ask you for some product attributes. So after sales service provided, installation, warranty, you, if this comes up, you can completely forget about this. But all you have to do is look where it says detailed requirements. So here you can simply ask them, hi, I'm looking to drop ship some of your products. Can we please lower the minimum order quantity to one so I can add them to my store? What are your requirements for drop shipping? And thank you. And I look forward to hearing and working with you. Now, I always like to add this little bit at the end because personally, I always like to sound professional and courteous. So the way that I talk to them, I expect them to talk to me. Now, when you send an inquiry to some of these suppliers, this also helps you out in something else, which is communication. So a lot of the times, since these manufacturers are overseas, typically in China, communication can be an issue. So if you send an inquiry or if you send a message to some of these suppliers, it's very helpful because this way you can get a feel for how they work and how they communicate. You can see how their customer services and how quickly they reply back to you. Now, remember, this is extremely important because their customer service, your supplier's customer service, ultimately is going to translate to your customer service. So if a customer has a question and asks you something about a product, if you don't have that information off the top of your head, then you're going to have to go ahead and ask 
your supplier. Now, if your supplier takes a week or two to answer you, that's how long you're going to take to answer your customer. And by that time, the customer is probably already going to either one, forget about the product or two, they probably already purchased it somewhere else. Now, your second option for getting around the minimum order quantities is just check out the ready to ship section. So if you go to the homepage on Alibaba.com, right in the middle of the page, you're going to have ready to ship. So let's just go ahead and click on that. And it's going to take you to a different one. Now, all of these different products have a lower minimum quantity. Some of them still have maybe a two, three, four, or even five minimum order quantity. And as you can see, some others still have large ones like 600, but you can just completely avoid those and look for the ones that just have a one. So for one, you have this barber chair right here, which is actually pretty interesting because I have a barber shop that's opening up a few blocks away that could potentially use some of these. So I might look into these and go talk to them or even then just create a quick website and send it to them. Aside from that, as you can see, you also have these 60 color beanies. You have some microfiber towels. You have these little octopus toys, which have a minimum order quantity of two, which you can still make that kind of minimum order quantity work for you. So instead of offering just one or packs of one for certain products, just offer a pair. Take, for example, this milk frother. It has a minimum order quantity of two, and it comes in quite a few different colors, different styles. And all this is really used for is for making your milk frothy so you can put it in coffee. Now, it's only a dollar and 98 cents. It's extremely cheap and it's just for one. You can easily sell it in sets of two and just lower the price by a couple of bucks. Remember that a lot of the times you're going to come face to face with a certain issue or a certain problem. And really, at the end of the day, it's not a problem. You can always make it work for you one way or another, you just have to think outside the box. Now, one thing to keep in mind is a lot of these different sellers are going to be selling the exact same products. The only thing that's going to differ is quality. So make sure you always look for a supplier that has high ratings. So for example, the milk frother that we were just looking at, you can see that it only has three reviews, but it does have a five star. And so far it has 20 people that have purchased it. Aside from that, if we go back to the blender bottle we were looking at originally, you can see that it has a 4.4 star rating and it has 10 different reviews and 51 people have purchased it. Now, let's quickly click on the actual rating. And here you can read the reviews of the product itself. So just take the time, look through the reviews, make sure they're positive and make sure they sound legit. Just make sure they don't sound too generic. A lot of times people are going to include some details. So just watch out for stuff like that. If you see little details like this, the quality is great. Blue color looks more amazing with a gold line. That means this person more than likely actually did purchase it and has the item in front of them and is leaving a legitimate review. As a quick note on the flip side of this, if you find a store or a product that has maybe one or 200 different reviews, but the reviews are extremely generic. Like let's say this product is great. Wow, thank you. My mom loves it. My brother loves it. I purchased it from my cousin and they think it's great. If it's a lot of different reviews like that, be careful because if the reviews are not specifically addressing the product itself, there's a small possibility that the reviews could be fake. So always watch out and to avoid any confusion and make sure you have the highest quality, order a sample for yourself and check it out. Make sure it's good. Make sure it's up to your standards and it's something that you would buy and actually keep. Now, I know I mentioned checking out the reviews of the sellers and I actually showed you the reviews of the items themselves, but this is how you can check out the reviews of the sellers themselves and how you can find actual legitimate sellers. So when you're looking at a product page, look for the seller information. So if you look on the right hand side, you're going to see the seller's information. Now, this can come in two different ways. For one, it can be simple like this and just completely white. So here you can see some information on the seller themselves. So you can see that they are a manufacturer and trading company and they're located in China and they've been around for six years. So so this means they've been selling on Alibaba for the last six years. Their response time is typically less than four hours. So if I message them now, for the most part, I will be getting an answer back within four hours. But then again, remember that can also vary on location. So I'm in the United States. They're in China. If I message them at maybe two in the morning, I know for a fact that they're probably not going to get back to me until the next day because over there it's going to be like two or three in the morning. Then you can see how many sales they've had. So here they have 51 different transactions and you can see their on time delivery rate. So this is pretty cool because it shows you how many items have been delivered on time. So in this case, 85.7% of their deliveries have made it to the customers on time. Now, this is one way that you're going to see it. The other way is going to be this one that shows verified supplier. Now, when you see a verified supplier, that should give you a bit more trust in actually making the purchase. Verified suppliers typically have better reviews and have a better reputation on Alibaba. Now, here you can see the same thing. You have the name of the company itself, and they are a multi-specialty supplier, meaning they sell a bunch of different things. Then you can see that they're Chinese. They've been around for four years. And here you have a bit more information now. So you have their store rating. So they have a 4.4 out of five stars. It's pretty good. Their on-time delivery rate is actually 97.6%, which is fantastic. 
Their response time is typically less than three hours. You can even see how much they make in a year. So last year they made roughly about $330,000 or more. Their main markets are actually North America and it shows some of their different services. So you can see they have minor customization and they have design-based customization. So if there's anything you wanna change on the products, you can reach out to them and they could possibly help you out with that. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you is something that most suppliers on Alibaba should already have, but always double check and make sure. So right here where it says purchase details, Details, make sure that it has the protection with trade assurance badge. As you can see, this seller has it, and so does this one. This means, as I mentioned earlier, if there's any issues with your products, if the quality is not up to par, five months instead of what they told you, maybe one month, then this is when you can reach out to Alibaba and you can rest assured that they will take care of you. Aside from that, just be vigilant. Make sure you look at all the different details of the sellers. Make sure you check out the details of the items themselves. And if the price for something seems way too good to be true, so let's say you're trying to drop ship a printer and the printer is being sold for 15 20 dollars when typically other sellers have it for a hundred dollars be wary of that and just do your research remember a lot of the times if it's too good to be true it probably is now there's going to be a few different acronyms that you're going to come across on alibaba that you might not know. Trust me, I had to look up some of these and I had to Google it because the first time I went on the website and I started going through it, I found a few terms that I was like, what? So let me go ahead and clear this up for you really quick. This shouldn't take more than a minute or two. And let's go ahead and start with MOQ. What is MOQ? MOQ stands for minimum order quantity. That just means how many units of a particular item you have to purchase. So one product might have an MOQ of 10 while the other one might have one. And remember, we're looking for MOQs of one because we're drop shipping. We're not gonna be buying more than one because our customers more than likely aren't gonna be buying more than one. Next up, we have OEM and OEM stands for original equipment manufacturer. This means that the supplier that you're sourcing your product from is the actual manufacturer of the product. Now, it's good when you find some OEM suppliers because that means you can actually reach out to them and see if they can make any modifications to the product or add some type of branding to it. The next one is ODM, which stands for Original Design Manufacturing. And what an ODM supplier does is they'll give you product ideas to be able to sell. So instead of manufacturing the products themselves, they'll just give you the different ideas for what you can sell and add to your store. Now, when you're searching for different products, you might come across a gold supplier and you're going to look at it and you're going to think gold supplier that sounds awesome does that mean that they're highly rated not necessarily when a supplier is labeled a golden supplier that simply means that they're promoting their products on alibaba so they're paying alibaba to promote their products so alibaba is putting them on top of their list on top of their search ranking and they're giving them a little badge that states that they are a golden supplier pretty much the same way when you run ads on ebay etsy or amazon you're going to see the promoted product on the top of the list it's either going to be number one or number two and you're going to see something that that says that it's an ad from the seller. This is pretty much the same thing, except instead of directly saying that it's an ad, it's just gonna say that this is a golden supplier. Then you have IQC, which stands for internal quality control. This is the first step in quality control. This means that the manufacturer inspects the raw products before sending the products out to be manufactured into an actual item or product that you're purchasing. Next up, you have QC and QA, quality control and quality assurance. And what this means is that the products that you're sourcing or you're purchasing are gonna be up to quality and up to par to quality control standards. So you can rest assured that you're going to have a guarantee that your products are going to be good quality. Another term that has to do with quality control is IPQC, internal process quality control. What this means is the suppliers or manufacturers are going to be making sure that everything in the production line is going as it should be. So they're going to make sure that everything is of quality and everything is up to standard. Now let's talk about shipping really quick. When it comes to shipping, you have FOB. It's either freight on board or free on board. What this means is simply that the manufacturer is going to ship your product to the nearest port to your location. Once the item arrives at the port, that delivery from the manufacturer to the port is going to be free. Now, when it comes time to actually unloading the product from the port and having that shipped to your customer, then that's when you're going to have to pay for the shipping. And the last one that I'm going to cover for this list is going to be CIF, cost, insurance, and freight. Now, what this means is the seller is going to take the responsibility of paying the shipping and the freight charges. So you don't have to worry about that. Now let's talk a little bit about payment options. So as you know, different suppliers and different companies, different websites, they all accept different forms of payment and Alibaba has their preferred methods. For the most part, if you're purchasing wholesale and you're purchasing a large number of items, you're gonna be in contact with a supplier and they're gonna send you an invoice. From there, you can go ahead and pay that invoice or if you're drop shipping and you're simply just making the purchase, these are the different payment options that you're gonna have. So for one, you have wire transfers as well as online transfers. Of course, you always have the option to pay 
with credit and debit cards. Some sellers will give you the option to pay with PayPal, and you also have the option to pay through Western Union or a different payment processor such as Boleto. Now, as a dropshipper, your best option for payment methods is going to be the Alibaba Trade Assurance for the simple fact that it also has buyer protection service. Now, that's everything that you need to know about Alibaba itself. Now, let's go ahead and start dropshipping. So the first thing that we need to do is find a winning product. Now, how are you going to find winning products for Alibaba? Well, there's a few different ways. For one, on Alibaba itself, you can go ahead and check out the best sellers or the higher ranking or top ranking. So if you're on the main page of Alibaba, all you have to do is scroll down a little bit and you're going to find a section that says top ranking. Just go ahead and click on that and you're going to see some of the best sellers on Alibaba. Now, another option that you have is checking out a product's transaction history. So this is actually really cool because it shows you how many units have been sold of the particular product. So in this case, we're looking at an LCD touchscreen baby bottle steam sterilizer now how many have been sold because it only has one review it's a five-star review and it shows 12 different buyers now if you scroll down a little bit to where the description is you're going to see a few different tabs you're going to see the product details the company profile and transactions go ahead and click on that and then you can see how many different transactions have been made so just looking at this you can see that there's been a few different shipping destinations you have the u.s China, US again, and Canada, and how many pieces have been purchased. So this person bought 10, this one also bought 10, this one bought 12, here they bought seven, going to Canada, they bought 10, and you also have the different dates of when they were purchased. So if you have a product that has been consistently selling and recently has been consistently selling, then you have a pretty good product. You have a possible best seller. Now on that note, looking at the product page, if you keep on scrolling down, you're going to see suppliers, popular products. So here you can see some of the best sellers from this particular supplier. So you have some leather car seat covers, you have a fruit slicer, a manual drain cleaner, and you have a few other items that you can choose from. Now, after you found the product or products that you want to import to your store and you want to start selling, then you want to make sure before you actually import them to your store that you have a reputable supplier. And as I mentioned earlier, just look through the reviews, look through the seller themselves, look at the seller's rating and make your decision from there. If you see that they're a trustworthy supplier, then go ahead and save those links, save those products, because we are going to go ahead and start importing those to our store. But before we import them, we need to figure out where we're going to start selling. So are we going to start selling on Shopify, Wix or WooCommerce, where we're going to make our own websites? Or are we going to be selling on a marketplace such as Etsy, eBay, Amazon or Facebook Marketplace, where all we have to do really is just list the different products and hopefully start getting some sales. Now, honestly, at this point, it's really going to depend on you. Do you prefer to create your own website or do you prefer to sell on a marketplace that already has organic traffic? Remember that there's going to be pros and cons to each, but primarily when it comes to having your own website, the biggest difference between that and a marketplace is going to be traffic. So if you have your own website, people aren't going to know that you're there. It's going to be up to you to bring people to that website and start building up some brand recognition. Now, how do you do this? There's quite a few different ways. For one, you can start advertising both free and paid. So you can start running paid Facebook ads or you can start making some content. So you can order one of the products and you can start simply making some videos, some fun, entertaining videos and posting those on TikTok as well as Instagram reels and even YouTube shorts. Now, obviously, this does require a little bit of extra work on your part when it comes to the marketing. Now, when it comes to a marketplace, then you really don't have to worry about marketing. You don't have to worry about people coming to your store because when somebody goes to eBay or Etsy, they're ready to make a purchase. So bringing in traffic isn't going to be the hardest thing. But one key difference between the marketplace and your own website is that a marketplace for the most part is going to have some different fees. Primarily when it comes to transaction fees, they might be a little bit higher than they are going to be for something like, let's say, Shopify. Also, when you're selling on a marketplace such as Etsy or eBay, the customizability is not going to be as much as it is when you have your own Shopify store. All right, now we know what products we want to sell and what platform we want to sell them on. Now it's time to actually start bringing those products to our store. Now there's a few different ways we can do this. And usually the way people go about it is the manual way. So what you're going to do in this case is you're going to go to the product that you want to import and you're going to find the different images. So in this case, we're going to go with this right here. And all you have to do is right click and typically what you would do is right click and save as, but as you can see, this has this little window over it where it zooms in. So you can't really save the image. So we're gonna have to scroll down and we can take our images from here. So just right click, save image as, and you're gonna have to do that for all of the different images that you wanna add to your product page on your website or on your marketplace listing. After that, you're gonna have to go ahead and actually copy over the description. So right click, copy, go to your website or your marketplace, 
and paste the description and then make any necessary adjustments. I suggest making adjustments because honestly, six pieces, heat resistant, eco-friendly, reusable baking and pastry tools, set beige, plastic utensil sets via suppliers, Kankai, doesn't sound good. And on top of that, it shows the supplier's name. So just go ahead and change that. One easy way that you can do that is simply going over to ChatGPT and just simply put, give me a product name for, go ahead and paste the title and just remove this right here. And let's see what ChatGPT gives us. So the first thing it gave us was Bake Nest Eco Heat, six piece beige utensil set, reusable baking and pastry tools. Perfect. It sounds way better. Then after that, you're going to have to go ahead and check out the different details and the description for the item. And you can either put this as is. So just go ahead and copy and paste it, which honestly, it's not going to look that good. Or you can once again, just go back to ChatGPT and put write this into a description. Typically, what I like to do is I'll put the details in quotes. And for the most part, since I am in the US, we don't go by millimeters or kilograms here. So at the end, I like to put convert and replace millimeters to inches as well as kilograms to pounds and press enter. Now it gave me a similar description, except it's a bit more structured. So it looks a bit better and it did change all of the kilograms to pounds as well as millimeters to inches. Now, if you want to make it a bit better, you can also tell it to make it into an actual description. So write it as a written description. And as you can see, it's already coming up with something way better than what we had earlier. So let's just read the intro. Introducing the kitchen utensils, six piece utensil set. A must have for every home kitchen made from high quality plastic. This set includes essential baking and pastry tools that are not only heat resistant, but also eco friendly and reusable. With its base color, it adds a touch of elegance to your culinary space. And it gave us the rest of the details in paragraph form. So as you can see, ChatGPT really streamlines the entire process of writing your descriptions as well as your titles. And from here, once again, we have to go ahead and highlight copy, and then just paste it onto either our marketplace or our website. Then we're going to have to go ahead and add all of the different variations once again, manually. So as you can see, it takes some time. If you're doing one, two, maybe even four or five, it's all right. You know, it'll take some time, but ultimately you can get through it. But if you're doing 10, 15, 20, even a hundred listings, then it's going to get extremely time consuming and you're pretty much just going to focus days on end just for product importing. Now, let me show you how you can completely streamline the entire process to make it a lot quicker. So for this, all we have to do is head on over to AutoDS and log in. And once we're logged in, we just simply have to go ahead and click on add products. Now to show you, I'm going to be doing three different products. So in this case, I'm going to click on multiple products stores and I'm going to go to the different products that I wanted to import. So I want to import this culinary set. So all I have to do is click on the link and copy it over, press enter. Then I'm going to go ahead and actually import the frother that we looked at. Same thing, paste and enter. Then these headphones copy, paste, and then just click on add as draft. Now everything is going to be copied over to my draft section. From there, I can make any necessary adjustments before having the items go live on my store. As you can see, this saved a ton of time. Now that we have all of our different products listed on our website, we just got a sale and now we need to fulfill it. How do we do that? So now the same way that we did the importing to our products, there's two different ways that we can do our order fulfillment. Well, Three actually. So the first way is the manual order fulfillment, where you're going to go ahead and take your customer's shipping details, log into your supplier's website, make the purchase. And of course, instead of having the item shipped to you, you just have it shipped directly to your customer. And then once you have a tracking number, you just go ahead and update your customer with that. Now, the other option is either automatic orders or fulfilled by AutoDS. What automatic orders is, is pretty much an automated version of what I just said. So when you receive an order, AutoDS is going to go ahead and take those order details and it's going to take the login details for the supplier of your choice. So in this case, you're sourcing your items from Alibaba. You're going to go ahead and log into Alibaba through AutoDS. Then AutoDS is going to go ahead and log into Alibaba on your behalf and it's going to make the purchase using your credit card details or your banking details. After that, it's going to have the item sent directly to your customer and it's going to update your customer with the tracking details as it becomes available. Now, the third option is fulfilled by AutoDS where it's going to do the exact same thing except instead of using your buyer account, it's going to use the AutoDS buyer account. So AutoDS has their own accounts for all of these different suppliers. So when it comes time to make the purchase, your accounts are left completely untouched. Same thing goes for the payment. Instead of using your banking or your credit card details, AutoDS is going to use a balance that you top up. Now, just like with product imports, 
If you decide to do it manually, it's perfectly fine, especially if you do maybe two or three orders a day. It's not going to take a long time. But when you really start scaling and you start getting 10, 15, 20 different orders a day, then again, it's going to get extremely time consuming. And most of your time is going to be focused on just that. So when it comes time to actually scaling your business, automation is something that can really help you out with that because it'll take care of all of the ins and outs of certain processes for your store, which at the end of the day is going to equal out to a lot more free time for you. Free time that you can use to either reinvest that time into your business and continue growing by adding more products, doing more product research or setting up different shops or time that you can simply use to just kick back and relax. And that is how you can start drop shipping from Alibaba today. If you found this video informational, if you found it helpful, if you found it useful, please make sure to leave a like and also remember to hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos on either the best dropshipping products or how to scale your dropshipping business. Huge thank you to everyone for watching today, especially if you made it all the way to the end. Once again, my name is Mario with AutoDS and catch you all in the next video.